Wednesday. Um, Andrea, you're staying with us. Now, we asked six MPs how their lives have changed during lockdown and how they feel about coming back to Westminster. It was a 26-hour journey from Westminster to Orkney, and it's quite remarkable. Although I've not been in Westminster, although I've not been doing the weekly commute, I can't think it's ever been busier. Instead of going and clearing out the local shop from eggs, we bought four chickens. They're now uh, happily settled, so we're getting four eggs a day from them. It's been a struggle having a one-year-old at home and trying to cope with working full-time and then also being a full-time mum. Having my husband here, we've been tag-teaming back and forth, so when one of us has got a Zoom call or, or a conference call, we just tag each other in. And then having to have the television play and see BBs is on in the background constantly to try and give us some respite. During lockdown, I've been trying to keep myself fit by doing keepy-uppies with football. Lockdown's been challenging, but spending a huge amount of time working with constituents, working through their issues and spending more time with one's family, which with three small boys is a bit of a bonus most of the time. In the little bit of spare time I have had during lockdown, I have been practising my skateboarding skills. I'm at home with my 72-year-old mother, um, but my casework has increased by 300%, so there has been huge challenges around that. Warehousing and distribution is, is, is one of the biggest sectors in my constituency. Workers were very concerned about social distancing um, uh, regulations, the supply of PP and so on, um, because by the nature of their work, it, it, it was, you know, they, they, they were finding it difficult. The real anxiety, the anguish that uh, people face is financial. Uh, are they going to have jobs about there? Do they have any money in there? pockets? Are their businesses going to collapse that they've spent years uh, building up? Uh, the worst thing, I think, is that so many people have been made redundant, chucked out of their jobs, even though the government have guaranteed the furlough. This should be the time that we're getting the visitors to bring in the money that we uh, can then use over the winter months. If we don't get these visitors now, and I think that's almost certainly going to be the case, then Local businesses, tourism businesses, will not have the resource that they can rely on over the winters. We've had two unprecedented events hit us, natural disasters that that were nobody's fault. So obviously we had businesses closed because of the flooding. Our high street was decimated because of the weather. People weren't in their houses and then coronavirus hit. We were just about to start getting businesses reopened. People were moving back into their homes and then they were hit again. So it's been really, really hard for them. I've been told to stay at home by my GP and a letter I've had from the NHS. I now can get up my stairs, which I never could because the chairlift decided to break down on day two of the lockdown. Believe me, I've been home for 10 weeks now. I would be back uh, tomorrow if it is safe to do so. I absolutely believe Parliament should return. We've got to set an example to the nation. But what is entirely wrong is to say to those MPs who are sick, self-shielding or isolated for one reason or another, that they cannot properly participate in Parliament, that they cannot have a vote. I think it's too soon. Um, I think we should wait until we have the contact tracing um, programme up and running right across the, the country. Um, MPs travel up and down using public transport. Um, and, and I think we should be showing leadership. I think Parliament should be showing leadership. The virtual Parliament was a brilliant innovation, a piece of work. The officials did a wonderful job in, in getting it to work, and I commend them for that. But it cannot replicate the essential functions of the House of Commons. That's not just being able to speak in debates properly, which virtually we couldn't do, but it's the informal mechanisms. It's speaking to your colleagues, speaking to ministers. We have a perfectly good system of virtual and hybrid parliament that should be continuing. We should not be asking MPs to travel from the four corners of the United Kingdom and, and take their germs and be super spreaders. We should be continuing the processes that we have been proven to work uh, instead of having this conga line of a voting system because the voting lobbies have been condemned by Public Health England.
some MPs' reflections from lockdown. Well, Adam Fleming has been magically replaced.